If we were going to do a mystical quest, what do we have that the ancients didn't have? They have almost everything that we had and more. They had lots of leisure time. They had societies that facilitated and honored the religious quest, which we don't, really. They had drugs. I mean, not quite as good as ours, but they had drugs for modifying consciousness. They had motivation, and mostly all, well, they had plenty of time and people who were devoting their whole lives to this. We have none of that. You know, we we're just amateurs at that. But there's one thing that we do have that they that they lacked, and that is, we have a knowledge of the physical world that works quantum mechanics. It works down to the very bottom of the atomic scale and to the very ends of the universe. So we know about matter, which they didn't. They were just stumbling around. They had myths about matter, but no knowledge. So that's our strong point. So that's where quantum tantra comes in. We exploit our strong point. We, we use physics, quantum physics, to go where no man has gone before because they were, they were uh, uh, restricted by, by the tools they had. Lots of leisure time and good drugs and, and, uh, and, uh, and a society that fostered this kind of search. So we only have one advantage, but it's a big one. We tried to do with physics what drugs do to the, to the mind. We irritated that chemists were the first ones to develop substances that, that uh, altered consciousness. Not only the contents of consciousness, but you know who you really are, who yourself is. So we'd like to develop uh, physics-based psychedelics. And in particular, what our goal is, is to join my mind, your mind, to the minds in nature. We kind of have a postulate of, 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 of um, panpsychism, that mind is not confined to you but there's all kinds of minds around us, not only in insects and mammals, but, you know, tables and chairs and things. We're just immersed in mind, and we need a way to prove that. So we need a tool that would connect my mind with the mind of nature. So I've tried to develop such tools, and uh, hence, uh, two of them have already been developed, the Stellarator and the Lunarator. And these are ways to use coherent light to um, connect two human minds together. Since we know humans have minds, that's going to be the easiest. So the, 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 probably the first break for the modern torture will be some kind of mechanical telepathy, where my mind and yours merge into one by doing something from physics, like being in the same vibrating magnetic field, or in the case of a stellar radio and lunar radio, to be in the same coherent field of light. And the stellarator works on the little known fact that the star, light from stars is incredibly coherent. That the, um, there's something called the coherence radius where all the lights vibrate in phase. And for the uh, largest star in the sky, that's about six feet. So when we look up at this star, which is Betelgeuse in, in, in Orion, uh, there's a six-foot sphere of coherent light that, that's vibrating all in, in phase as we look at this star. And all the other stars have larger coherence radiuses. So you can imagine like standing in a spotlight of, of coherent light that pulls you together. Um, and that's the basis of the stellarator. You use a little tube to concentrate only one star, so you cancel out all the other coherent, coherent vibrations. And you, you look together at this one star, and your eyes and your brain all get in, into the same vibrational state, and perhaps telepathy will happen. <laughs>